right, all right, all right. So, hello, welcome to tutorial number three of our AADA20 course, where we're going to look into how to get the drawings out of Revit and how to make them nice, right? And uh, also how to create a few more drawings uh, while we're at it. Um, so first of all, uh, I have uploaded one uh, file to uh, the, the, the course's website, which you can download. And it's, let me just pull it up here. It's located right here under course specific files, AAD 20 Revit sheet. So that one we will need to use because that is basically our template for creating drawings. So let me think. Um, yeah, perhaps let's start with uh, creating a few sheets or at least one sheet and then we will go on to making the drawings nicer. So under sheets, right here in the bottom uh, left corner, I'll right click on, on the sheets and create new sheet, right? Which will basically, it, it might give you more options than it does for me, but it's basically giving you a few options to choose from. I don't like any one of these options, so I will load in the file that I have just shown, the, the, the one that you need to download, right? So you download that file, you post it in your folder anywhere, and you just kind of link it by pressing the load button, you find it, wherever it is, it's right here for me, <clears throat> and you hit open. And then it's going to load it in as your uh, title block, as your sheet, you hit OK, and there it is, right? So what can you do with this? Well, you can, for instance, if you select the sheet now, so you need to select it. You can click on this question mark here, for instance, and you can type in your name, right? There we go. And also you can click here and you can type in what kind of drawing is it going to contain, you know, the, this particular sheet. So I will uh, say that we will start from the site, right? Because that's the first on the list of deliverables, so might as well. So I can just write site, Plan. Right? And that is done. All right, so we have this, uh, this guy done here, but now we need to get the site inside of this sheet. So first of all, I need to kind of prep the site so that uh, site drawing so that it's a little bit nicer. So let me jump into the site drawing here, or site view right here. And there are quite a few things that I want to change. First of all, uh, the most important one is it, this is way too big, right? It's there is no way that this is going to fit on a three page at the scale of one to a thousand, right? So I need to kind of trim away or not trim away, but crop the view, uh, trim away the, just the view, not the file itself, so that uh, we are more more focused on the building. So let me go to. Oh crap, I forgot where it is. Oh, it's in the bottom, right? So let me go to the bottom here. Uh, you see my cursor. Uh, here we have two options. One is, uh, one is crop view. The other one is show crop region. I will choose to crop view, bam. And then I will choose to show the actual crop region that is being used to crop the view. So this rectangle appears. Once I click on both of these, this rectangle appears which basically, um, it, it's like a window through which we are looking at the drawing. So if I select that rectangle and I drag one of its sides here, for instance, you can see that it crops, yeah, it does exactly what you would expect it to do, it crops the view. So let me do something like this. Right, okay. So this is, uh, is kind of, what I'm starting to work with. Maybe I'll add, add a few more things later, but uh, for now, this is fine. And let me just change the view scale immediately. Uh, so without having anything selected, the selected, uh, we receive properties of the view itself, right? So 
under view scale, let me just change this to one to a thousand immediately, just so that we can see what we're dealing with in terms of uh, grid scaling and so on. So, okay, there are still a few things that I want to fix, but uh, for now, let's just drag in this view into our, uh, where is it, sheets, let me expand that, this sheet right here. So I will go back to the sheet and I will take my site and I'll just drag and drop it in like so. Bam. That's it. That's all, all I needed to do. Uh, you can see that it uh, receives a few unnecessary bits. So first of all, let's get rid of this uh, site, one to a thousand, the dashed line, and, you know, this, this default Revit stuff. I will just select my uh, escape that. I will just select it. I'll go to, no, sorry, I need to select this viewport itself. Now I'm in its settings and I believe if I edit type, so if I click on that edit type button, here I have show title and show extension line, two options. One is for some reason yes or no, Ah, it has view multiple, uh, one mute, multiple viewports option. Okay, that makes sense. So under show title, I'll choose no. And then show extension line will become grayed out as well, right? So once I hit apply and I hit okay, they're gone. Okay, so that's first thing that that's fixed. Um, second thing is we actually can get away with a little bit more. That's one to a thousand, right? Oh, by the way, notice how it automatically writes the, oh, you don't see it, wait, oh, there we go. How it automatically writes the scale here. That's, uh, that's a nice little automated thing about this sheet. I, I, I like it. Okay. Uh, what else? In terms of graphics, well, perhaps I, I, I want to just make sure that let me just see here, select that, and let's see if there's anything else that we can change here in the, in the, in, in the sheet itself uh, that we might not want to see. So once I select the, the, the viewport, as you can see here, once I select the viewport, I can see uh, there's underlay, there's graphics, so nothing to change here really. But under uh, view range, or rather under extents, where it says crop view and crop region visible, I don't want to really see the crop region, so I will hide that. So that it's, it's not within a, some sort of a boundary rectangle. Okay, so now we can make it a little bit bigger. Let me just jump back to the site view. <clears throat> Can I do something like this? Ah, screw it. Let's just do it like that. Side view, grab that, uh, grab that region. Why don't we see it anymore? There we go. Let's just make it a, a bit bigger here, a bit bigger here. So we can have a slightly larger extent. Let's come back to the sheet. Yeah, that's, that's good, that's fine. You can do it with one to 500 scale as well, I believe, uh, so this is one to a thousand. So you can have a site plan at one to 500 scale as well, it's just uh, less surrounding buildings will fit. That, that's, that's about it. And now once I have enabled the crop region preview in my site, it's back here, which I hate. <laughs> So let, let me just <clears throat> disable the crop region, hide crop region option here in the side drawing. Okay, let's switch up a few colors and let's get rid of those grid lines because those are really obnoxious, at least for me. So I will go to, you can either click here under visibility and graphics overrides, you can click on edit or you can go to view, Visib visibility and graphics and click on that. That's the same thing. And here I'll just change it up a bit. So uh, let me just put it here. 
<coughs> so we can that you can see. Oh, <coughs> God damn it! Sorry, just give me a second. <coughs> okay, we're Gucci. So first things first things first. It's the drawing, right? The drawing is horrible. Um, the red is way too much in your face and there's a lot of, you know, unnecessary bits. So let's see how we can change it. So the drawing can be found under tab called imported categories. And this is its uh, override. So, so here we can change the colors. For some reason, uh, it doesn't recognize this as a hatch. It still recognizes it as series of lines, which sure, whatever. Um, so let's just change it up. So wherever it says site, let me just click on the override button. So site override. And here I will just say color, give me super light gray. Maybe even, even lighter. Something like that. Wait, uh, don't care. Hit OK. Let's hit apply just to see. So this is how it's going to look like now. I think that's fine, that's okay. Then for land, I have no idea what land is, so let me hide it and see. Okay, so land is all of the streets. That is actually fine, I will keep it as it is. Then for hatch, so hatch is for the buildings. I don't want it to be so intense, so let me override the color to be gray. Okay, okay, apply. And last thing is the building outline, which is buildings. I will overwrite it to be black, but also to have a higher weight. So this is no override, this is weight one. Uh, let me apply. This is with weight one. Uh, let me change this real quick to weight 16 so that you can see what we're dealing with. That's with weight 16. So I assume if we do weight eight, it should be, yeah, that's reasonable. That's fine. Okay, so we're done with, uh, with the drawing, with the background drawing, I think this is okay. Um, let's go to, let's get rid of the grid and the elevation uh, marks. So I'll go to annotation categories and I'll find Grid, 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 grids. There we go, grids, and I'll just untick them all together. So grids, get rid of that, hit apply, cleaner, nice. Now same thing for elevations. E, 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 elevations, there we go, apply, that's done. Um, what else can we do here? Ah. I think that's that's fine. Um, and now for the model itself, I don't think we need to change anything here because it's just such a small, such a small thing in the drawing, so that um, no graphics will will make a difference for for the form itself. So I'll just hit OK. I'll go to my site plan, take a look how how it looks like. I don't know. Uh, I. I feel like one to five hundred would be a better, better thing for for this. It's cool that it shows the surrounding buildings, but at the same time, it's way too too small. Let's mm. no, I'll I'll stick to one to a thousand because it's not about it looking nice. It's about information. So one to a thousand. Let's let's leave it at that. Okay, so let's call site plan done. Of course, you can do much more stuff with it, but I'll, I'll just call it a day uh, with it. Let's go to level one and let's just create one more section because uh, for, for now, I just have a single section here uh, going through here and I want one more cutting through the staircase because um, here we just see the pro projection of the staircase. So let me just, uh, in level one, let me create a section and that section is going to go through uh, something like that, perhaps. So it's going to do its magic. Oh crap, it's going right through the middle of the staircase, so I'll need to move it a bit. But that's fine, that's it's not, not that hard to do. 
Okay, uh, so let's take this, zoom in, and move it right through the middle of the stair. Again, to repeat myself from previous tutorials, you should have more detailing than I do. I don't want to have five hour tutorials for this, that this is why my detailing in, of the building is low. But you should spend more time polishing it, of course. Okay, so we have two sections, section one, section two. I will rename them perhaps. Um, let's wait for it to load in first. Because uh, I accidentally double clicked on it. Come on. Yeah, and I'll immediately switch off the shaded view. And let me just right click on it and rename it to section A A for one. And right click, rename section. That's not how you write section. Section B B for the other one. Okay, so we, we do have those two sections. Which one? Uh, let's work on section A, because this is the one that we currently have. So I'll just create a new sheet for it. Same template, hit OK. And here I will just change the name to section A A. The, the scale will be inherited from the section. So let me jump back to it. And let's change the view scale to, I believe we are going to use one to 200. Hit apply. Wait for it to do its magic. Okay. Or not, okay, let's wait. Yeah, there we go. So it increases the size of the grid lines. That's fine, that's, that's okay with us. Okay, let's Fix it up a notch. So first of all, uh, crop region is by default enabled in the section. So let me just make it bigger like that so that I can fit the levels in here. It's, uh, yeah, it's not the fastest. Let me grab level three and level four. Come on, just, <laughs> this is so much lag. Come on, just, there we go. And let me just drag them out till here. That's good. Let me grab level two and level zero or level, level one rather, drag them out here. So now all of these are aligned and let me do the same thing with the grid lines here, drag them out. And for the grid lines, I will enable A, B, C, and D. So I'm just clicking on the grid line and uh, clicking the tick box. Okay, so we have that. Let us go back to the sheet and let's just drag in section A, A into the sheet. Wait for it. There we go. Position it like that. Wait for it again. It's a lot of up. Oh, there we go. A lot of waiting. Um, that's that's fine. That uh, looks looks okay. Uh, one thing that I want to change is getting rid of this uh, uh, crop window so it's right here in the bottom again height crop region so it should be now quite quite nicely placed all right let's jump to section aa and change up some things with it so i will go to visibility and graphic settings again and this time around let's start off from the model categories right here uh, eh, eh, eh. Let me cancel and zoom in a bit closer just so that you can see better what's what's going to change 
uh, visibility and graphics. There we go. So we'll start with model categories. What do we change? Well, we changed the walls. That's the first thing. Walls. Um, and here we have how do they look like in the projection and how do they look like when they're cut, right, in the cut. So I will actually just work with the part where they are being cut here and I'll just say that, well, they should have a pattern um, which, which is a solid black cut. And the color should be, yeah, should be black. Hit OK, hit Apply, and now the walls, once, once it stops having a stroke, the, the walls will have a black cut going through them. Or not cut, but a black fill going through them. That's good. OK, same thing for um, the, the floors, the slabs, and the roof. So let's find slabs. Actually, while we're at it, stairs will also get the, the, the black cut. So solid fill, black color for stairs, under patterns. I'm not changing the lines because uh, it seems like they're good. If, if they will look bad in the uh, print, uh, I will come back here and change the lines. But for now, they, they, they seem fine. Um, then we have uh, pipe, planting, parking, nah, mass, generic models. Where did I change their stairs? Okay, uh, so floor, f -f 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 -f. furniture, furniture, floors. There we go, floors. Change this, or wait, is floors and slabs not the same thing? Uh, let me ch check. Slabs, slabs. There's no slabs. Okay, so floors is going to be the, the, the horizontal slabs. Make that black. Oops, that's the foreground. Uh, no, right. Uh, we're not messing around with the foreground. We're just changing the background. Okay, so slabs are done. And then it's not updating, by the way, because I'm not pressing the apply button. Once I press it, it's going to update. Uh, it just takes too long, so I'm doing everything at the same time. A roof, roof, R, 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 roofs, change that to keep, keep changing the wrong thing. Um, no, right, instead here, solid fill, black. Okay, uh, now we can just hit apply and just check what, what changed. Um, the stairs will not change, and the reason why they will not change is because of uh, the fact that in this view we're not cutting through them, right? That's the only reason. All right. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Time for the facade, right? Cutting through the facade. So here we have uh, we imported the facade as curtain panels and curtain wall mullions. So curtain wall mullions again. I will. Just go for solid view, black color, nothing too fancy. Hit apply. Let's just see um, if, if these kind of uh, dimples here, uh, once they're being cut, if they will shade. Oh, oh no, they don't. Oh, they do. Okay, it just took a while for it to calculate. So they get shaded. And now it's same thing for glass. Um, or actually, we don't really want to shade glass, right? But we do want, uh, so, so it's under curtain panels, this is glass. So when we cut through it, we don't introduce a pattern. I think that's reasonable, but, uh, but, but, but uh, the transparency perhaps should be increased to like half. Let's see what, what it's going to do. We could add a color if, if you want to, but I, I don't, so we won't. <laughs> so that's 50% transparency. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe let's do 
30% or 33% transparency. And for the mullions, let's give it a gray color. So solid fill, light gray. Apply. I'm just thinking how to bounce off the form from the background so that it's, it's a little bit more in your face, so to say. Is that fine? Yeah, I, I think that's fine. I think that's, that's, that's okay. All right, so we have... Uh, but then do we do the same thing with walls? Yeah, we need to do it with walls as well. So let me just check what kind of gray color we use. 192, okay. Uh, let's do, uh, so floor slabs we don't care about, but we do care about the roof, R, 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 roofs, uh, patterns, uh, solid fill color. We said 192, so I believe it's this one, yes. And let's make it even more lighter, 224. So 255 is uh, white, uh, zero is black, meaning two, 224 or whatever we, we use is really close to being, you know, it's, it's light gray. Um, okay, so we have that then. Uh, same thing for walls, stairs, and, well, stairs maybe, no, stairs should also be gray then. Can we uh, kinda, no, we can't copy it, well, that sucks. Um, well, that's fine. I'll just say here, we use 224. So let me just copy that number and just use it here and here like that, and that's solid fill. Um, so that's for stairs, that's for roofs. We need walls. And I think that's, oh, the columns as well, and slabs. Um, so, 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 background, solid fill, two, two, four, two, two, four. I should just add that color, I know, but uh, no, don't worry about it. I, I do what I want. Uh, columns. Patterns. Background. Ah, yes, the wrong one. There we go. So we're changing up the column color as well. I'm forgetting something. What am I forgetting? Floors. This little thing right there will get colored. Uh, so floors, patterns. We'll need to figure out how to transfer the, these settings to other drawings uh, because I don't want to repeat this. Or maybe I'll, I'll pause the video and repeat it for other drawings as well. We'll see. I think there's a, a way of how to transfer the settings. There should be, and I believe I have used it before, I just don't remember. Let me just hit apply, hit OK, and kind of look at it, how it looks like in the sheet real fast, and then we'll come back to changing it up. Uh, section AA. Looks OK. I think it looks OK. Especially when you zoom in, it looks, looks kind of nice. The preview, of course, is, is low resolution preview uh, because we're not printing it out right now, but uh, yeah, looks good. Um, so that's nice. We don't need to change anything, which is always nice. <clears throat> Let's come back to visibility and graphics and see what else we can do. So, okay, uh, most of you are not right now thinking those are some really ugly levels, level markups. And those are some really ugly grid lines. I completely agree. <laughs> and let's leave it at that. <laughs> uh, we don't. We won't go into changing those up. Uh, that that would be way too, you know, micromanagey, so to say. Uh, so we're ignoring annotation categories altogether. Or maybe we can. 
let's just see. No, 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 no. I, I promise that I won't, so I won't. Um, imported categories, though. I want this line where the site is to be thick, a thick boy, right? So I'll select the site, lines, override, and I'll change the weight of it to, let's say, 12. Hit apply. And now once it kind of catches its breath, it will give us a thick line, which is nice. Or not. Ah, yes. Yes, nice. Uh, we okay. The line is a little bit too too thick. Uh, that's the first thing. And second thing is we forgot to change the color. So color will need to be black, and weight will need to be dialed down to eight. Apply again. Wait, 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 wait. There we go. Yeah, that's 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 fine. I, I think that yeah, that's good enough. So looking back at section, that's how it looks like in the in the drawing. One to two hundred, great. Uh, in in the and and the site looks like that. Okay, let's continue. So now we have one section done. Uh, let's do section BB. So before we do section BB, let me load it in first. Uh, and let's see if there's a way of how to inherit the, the style from section AA into section BB. So that we don't need to do it all again. Oh, wow. Uh, that's a, that actually looks pretty cool. <laughs> So first of all, let me just mess around the crop uh, box of the section. That's a tall boy as well. Maybe a little bit too, too much. Hmm. Oh, there we go. So levels are fine. Uh, the, the way they are kind of... Oh, wait, uh, view scale, 1 to 200. Eh. <laughs> eh. Apply. Let's wait for, for the view scale to go through. I, I, I keep forgetting, and this is important thing to, to, to not forget, the view scale, uh, changing it to the correct view so that the grid lines become, yeah, like that, and then you know exactly what's, you know, how it's going to look like. So I'll just move the grid line slightly above so that they're not so much in the way, and slightly below, and enable the tick marks or for them to be shown in the bottom. So that's good. Uh, we have a lot of stuff going on there. This is a wonderful staircase, as you can see. Nothing, uh, nothing wrong with the staircase at all. This is exactly how I would do it if I were creating a building. Um, right, but this course is not about the staircase, so we don't care. Let's, or rather, we should care, but we don't have the time to care about it in the tutorials. You should care about it in your own projects. You know, ma making it logical. Okay, sheets. Uh, right click, new sheet. Sure, save the project on while while we're at it. Uh, same template. Hit OK. Drawing name. Uh, section section b dash b uh, everything else is fine let's drag it in and i'll do one more plan after this and then i'll i'll start showing you how to create a pdf because you know if if we can, if we are able to do one plan that means you will be able to do a second one right hopefully um fits perfectly that's great 
Um, the section box again is, uh, is obnoxious, so let me get rid of the section box. Um, or not its section box, cro uh, crop region box right here. Now let's, uh, let's see, how can we transfer style from, uh, or visibility style from this view to section BB view. Um, okay, here we have view templates. So under view tab, in the correct view, you have view templates and visibility graphics. I believe view templates deals with that. So let's and, and click on it and let's see. Apply template properties to current view, create template from current view. Great, okay, let's create a template. And let me call it uh, section uh, super. You know, great template for a section. Hit OK. It does something. I don't know what it's doing, but it's doing something. It did something. Hmm. And this is basically our template, right? Yeah, okay. So section super has been created. Okay. Let's go to section BB. View templates. And I can't Oh, that's that's because we're in the uh, we're in the sheet view and not the actual view. So let's go to the actual view. View templates. Apply template properties to current view. And then we choose section super. Hit apply properties. Is it that simple? That's the question. Is it actually that simple? Yes, it is. So there are really good things about uh, Revit that just blow Rhino out of the water. That's great. Okay, so this is what we have. I really hate the staircase. I mean, I'm looking at the staircase and damn, I hate it. But uh, hopefully yours is going to be better. Okay, section BB. Double checking, everything seems to be all right. Let's, let's move on, let's continue. There are things that I don't like about this. Okay, so let's create new sheet and AADA20 sheet. Yeah, okay. Uh, and the name of it is going to be uh, plan, plan one, or we can just call it ground floor plan. Mm, need, need capital letters floor plan like that to keep the consistency uh, so we have that uh, let's uh, look at level one which is our ground floor plan I can even change it, change its name I think oh by the way one more thing um, if you're in a sheet and you accidentally double click on the on the sheet itself it will load in this kind of a family editor type of a thing uh, you can see it by this dash immediately close it <laughs> you don't want to edit the template of the sheet right so you just close it do you want to save changes no 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 no. you don't right so don't uh, don't accidentally double click instead if you want to edit something you click on the sheet and then you click on either the name or you know wherever you want to write stuff yeah, that's something that I notice students sometimes do and then they get stuck. Okay, back to level one. Um, actually, not that bad. I mean, uh, not great. <clears throat> that's for sure. But also not that bad. I'm just thinking, what can we add here? So first of all, let's, let's mess around with the styles. Uh, oh, first of all, sorry, let's change the view scale to 1 to 200, because that's the view scale that we're going to use. Oof. Yeah. 
Yuck. Okay, um, elevation markups. Definitely don't want to see those, so eventually I'll need to get rid of those. Let's see if we can actually use the section styles on our levels. So let me go to view, view templates, apply template pr properties to current view, and we can't see them here. But I think if we say view type filter, if we choose here to be all, then section super will pop up and then we can apply the properties. Let's see if it breaks it though, because it might break it. It doesn't, it works. Hurrah. Uh, there are things that I don't like. Um, so first of all, why the hell are the columns not being hatched? Uh, that's the first thing. Um, so let's find columns. The columns are not being hatched because they don't have a pattern associated with the cut. So let me change that. Background, solid fill, color, black. Okay. Okay. So columns will be fixed. Then floor slabs, floor, F, F, F floors will not have a pattern. So no override white color. Okay, apply. So now it's going to kind of do, do its calculations and basically our floor slabs now are going to have, yeah, they're fine. Wait, why is this? Okay, so staircase, we need to kind of get rid of that gray area there, which is fine. Um, okay, curtain panels are fine, columns. Pair. Why are you being shown like gray, not black? You're being cut through. What do you mean? Okay, sure. I, I will be... I'll just say this. Uh, oh, uh, uh, not there. Not there. Sorry. Uh, I mean, where it's a solid fill and it says gray, I'll just change this to black and kind of get over it this way. Um, then let's find stairs. There we go. Instead of gray, uh, no right color, no right. So we're kind of bringing it back. Um, so that's all good. Is there anything else I want to change? Not really. <clears throat> so I just hit apply. Jesus, there are no, there are no deep doors even here. Oh, right, uh, elevations, uh, visibility graphics, annotation categories, and we find elevations, and we untick those, apply. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and I think that's good. I think that is good. Let me just check a few things here in the section. What does it show here? Uh, nothing to change here. I'm just kind of going through it and, and just looking if... Taking a look if... Um, there's anything that, that, we, uh, that I might be missing. Uh, just give me uh, 15 seconds. Uh, that's good, that's good, that's good. Okay, and then in level one, view range, dev clipping, view template, um, hmm. scale value, display model normal. Shadow sketchy lines. Yeah, it uh, seems like uh, we're not missing anything. I think I'm forgetting something, but that doesn't seem like I am. Okay. So we do have our, our plan. And let me just drag it in. So that's going to be level one being dragged in here in our sheet. Let's wait. Ooh, it doesn't fit. Maybe it will. Let's see. Why doesn't it fit? It should fit. 
the section fits per oh okay that's because of the grid lines that's fine we can just put, place it here and then it fits fits nicely uh almost nicely come on grid lines be normal just move down now move up good <laughs> Can I just use that and just move it just slightly? Yeah, that's good enough. They're a little bit too close to the edge, but that's fine. Um, so we do have that. A building without any entrance and any doors. Wonderful. But with a cool facade, so at least that's working for us. And now I won't do one more plan, um, that's, that's for you, but it's basically the same procedure as what I did now. Uh, instead, I will do a 3D view. So let me just create a new sheet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just call it, uh, oops, I'll just call it axonometric view or um, perhaps it's better to call it isometric view uh, just so that it's not um, you're not dictating that it's a 45 degree angle of the view right um, so that 3d views and let's take a look at what what we have in, the, in, the, in our 3d view um, if you could, please create um, surrounding buildings for, for this view. Please do so, uh, because that will just create more, um, not realism, but uh, it, it, it will make it more believable, so to say. Uh, for me, maybe I will. Um, maybe I will create uh, a, a few a few of those just so that we we can see what's what's going on. So under site, um, I will create like a, a, a few uh, a few buildings here. So actually, to do that, I need to see, to know their height, and I will do that perhaps with uh, maps. With Google Maps, because uh, I'm I'm in a rush and I don't want to uh, spend too much time doing this. So that is that, and let me just book 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 book. Okay, there's already a thing be, uh, that has been built there. Okay. Okay, let's take a look. Um, so this is what I'm looking at right now, um, and this is what has been built. Oh, Ming. Okay, so that's a, like an office sharing space there. Um, okay, so I am currently looking at this, which is basically a, a small, a small building. So that's three point five. It's around seven six around six seven meters that that would be seven this is like six meters okay and this one is around uh also 3.5 and then three 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 so nine twelve point five let's call it 13 meters okay so this building right here i will say that it's six meters and this one is 13. Uh, let me just grab a, go to architecture tab, grab a wall tool, and let me just say uh, six. Just kind of go to town, right? Drawing. And I don't need to be precise at all. That is fine. Snapping like crazy. Like that, that, that. Uh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have that done, and then this one is 13. Oh crap, did I write 600? Ugh. 
Okay, I'll need to fix those uh, those walls, but that's fine. So this one is going to be 13. That, 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 that. Oh my God, I missed, but let's, let's just pretend that I didn't miss. That and that, okay. Oops. So we are done with that. This uh, building doesn't seem like it's, I, I believe it was demolished because there's nothing there. There's like a parking lot there. So, and this is the new one that, that's, that has been built in the site uh, in which you're designing. Also, there's a building there that we should probably draw, but um, eh, it's not here, so we don't care. Um, there is one building here though, which I will draw and that one is, oh my God, this is so hard. So if that is like a facade, let's just go to it. One, two, three, four, four floors, uh, three meters each, let's say, um, 12, 12 meters. I'll just, just be quick about it. I would usually do this kind of stuff in Rhino, by the way, not not in Revit, and I would just import the blocks. What? None of the created elements are visible in. Oh yeah, yeah, that's because it's, it's it has disappeared. That's that's fine. Um, right. So these guys need to be fixed. Um, unconnected height, 6,000. So I would be drawing these in Rhino, not in Revit, because it's faster, so, so much faster to just do it in Rhino. Uh, but now, for now, I'm just kind of, you know, that's fine, I, I'll, I'll do it in Revit, that's okay. Let's go to level two and just see. See those walls? Yeah, yeah, that's good. And let's just uh, create a roof uh, for, for every one of these. So I will just say roof by footprint. Punk, 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 punk. I'm just selecting. Wait, that's 30 degrees. No, 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 no. Uh, yes, discard roof. I should probably do a floor instead then. Okay, let's do a floor. Oh, yeah. oh that's fine. Because I don't then need to deal with, can I just do, no, I can't drag around them. Uh, if I'm doing a floor, I, I don't need to deal with the fact that um, the roof is, uh, the roof has an angle, floor is always flat, so I'm just being lazy. Uh, could the overlapping wall out of the walls? Um, no, yes, yes, sure, whatever. That and then level is level one and height offset is 6,000. Hit apply. Uh, let's see it in 3D. Oh, right, um, we kind of need to, first of all, do a hidden frame view. Second of all, extend the view so that we actually see it and that's our little box right there with a, a few few unnecessary lines of course as per usual but that's fine uh, so let now i'm actually I'm able to extend the view so that i can see more Mm -hmm. I think let me rotate it a little bit. Come on, just just rotate. You can do it. There we go. I think that's whoa. That's too much. It's so laggy for me. Uh, let me try wireframe view. Maybe that's going to help out. No, it doesn't. It makes things worse as per usual. Uh, so let's come back here. 
and just try try our best to clip the view I think that's fine uh, I still need the uh, uh, like a roof for for this structure here so let me go back to uh, wherever we're drawing it level two and just create a roof for for this guy so floor click 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 enter um level one and offset is i believe this was thirteen thousand millimeters hit apply uh and accept it yeah 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 hit yes uh go back to 3d view <clears throat> should be yeah now it has a ceiling um do we do do we do, 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 we do a view now in the sheet or later perhaps let's first fix it and then drag it into a sheet so by fix it i mean get rid of the axes and and, and whatnot all of the necessary bits so first things first this section box right here needs to go and i believe under modify is there a possibility to hide the section box Hide in view, hide elements. Oh, that's, that actually needs to be expanded a bit more than a little bit less. There we go. A bit more there. That's great. And now, so I'm, I just did like two buildings. You should do more, of course. Um, what was I doing? Oh, hiding, hiding the section box in the view. So hide in view, hide elements. There, there we go. That's fixed. Can I hide these in view instead of overwriting them? Hide, hide elements. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, actually worked. Okay, that's good. And now we can crop the view. If we give it some time and show the cropping. Okay, and now let's make it nice. Like let's let's actually focus on the on the facade here. So something like that. That is centered. Do we want it centered? Yeah, we probably do. Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll call it fine. Um, let's inherit uh, the um, styles, the, the, the view styles that we got from other... I'll actually hide that. And let's inherit the view styles that we had from um, our sections. So, view templates, not styles, templates. View templates, apply template properties, uh, filter all, all, section super, apply properties. Let's just see what, what, it's, what it's going to give us. And check our emails in the meantime. Okay, hit okay. This is how it looks like. Um, it's fine. It's it, it could be better, but it's fine actually. Uh, so I will I will say that this is kind of finished, and let me go to my sheet and the 3D view there. The scale doesn't matter here. It's still going to give you a scale, but it's it's whatever. We just change it here to make it fit better in, in, in the sheet. So that's... Oh, actually, it doesn't even inherit drawing scale. That's nice. Um, let, let me position this more properly. 
that maybe. There we go. That's our isometric view. Okay, let's do the last bit. So I have skipped over one plan uh, drawing, I believe, and nothing else, maybe? Uh, sure. Let's jump to, uh, to printing it out, right? So I'll go to File, Print, and here I have my, uh, not, not printing it out, sorry, exporting a PDF, right? Or PDFs. Um, so here I will just kind of specify what, what am I printing. So I, I'm, I'm using Adobe PDF. That means that it's going to create a PDF. You can also use um, Microsoft Print to PDF. That's fine as well. Um, but I prefer Adobe PDF. Then we specify under print range that we will only be printing selected views or sheets. And I'll click on select and I'm actually going to select them. Sheet, 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 sheet. There we go. These five guys here. Hit OK. Do you want to save those settings for use in future Revit session? Yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, or not because it's asking me additional questions and I don't want to answer those. So I'm just selecting those, those sheets and hitting OK. Um, right. Then it asks, would we like to create separate files? And yes, we would, because you might want to come back to them in Photoshop and add textures and whatnot to them, you know, make them nicer. Um, so we are going to export them as separate files. And I'll just browse and say desktop, oh, there's my tutorial, and I'll say new file. How is it called? Let's say Revit uh, PDF exports. There we go. Something like that. So we did that. Um, and I'll just call this uh, AD20, whatever. Hit save. So it's going to be saving like that. We're still not done though. We still need to choose the settings for, for how we are exporting them. So we click on setup here in the bottom uh, and then we choose, okay, so printer is Adobe PDF, that's great. Paper size is not a letter sized paper, it's actually A3. So we use that, A3. Then paper placement is centered, that's fine. Fit to page, no, 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 no. Instead we use zoom and we say 100%. So that what's A3 on this sheet is A3 printed, right? Uh, landscape, vector processing, raster quality, colors. Yeah, everything else is fine, right? So it's just those A3, center, zoom. Hit OK. And hit OK again. You have chosen to print five views as separate files. Do you wish to continue? Yes, I do, please. Uh, and for some reason, it still asks me to save. Uh, sure, I will. I will choose here. AD20 sheet, A0, yeah, save. It takes a long, not a long time, but it takes way too long to save these files, I don't know why, but while it's doing that, let me load up Photoshop. I'll just show you a few things that I kind of do with, with these files to, to make them nicer. It's not even, um, not even make them nicer, but basically if I want to kind of add some sort of a um, flare, <laughs> flare to them, that's, that's, that's what I do. Uh, in Photoshop, so oof. for some reason, the site plan. Oh, right. So the site plan became like this because we modeled only these buildings in it, so they get in the way of the 
of the hatch. Ah, crap. And that's fine. This is one of the things that I will fix in Photoshop, <laughs> actually. So now it's exporting section AA and it's going to do the same thing with section BB and so on, right? So it's, it's, it's going to take a while and the shitty part is that it's going to keep asking me to save the file, which I don't know. Perhaps it's better to export it as a single PDF, at least then it just asks, asks once. Okay, but for now we do have that site plan exported. Uh, let me actually close it and get it in Photoshop, drag and drop in. And here, I make sure that you choose media box rather than bounding box, that's important, media box. Hit okay. That's your site. Um, just give it a background, you know, a new layer behind it with a background. And let's uh, fix a few things. So here, oh my God, the lines, the lines are so bad, I would, Fix the lines, probably. Let's see how we can do that. So here I will just use the magic wand tool and just click inside of these regions. You know, these two, two regions of the buildings that are shitty. And I will just say, um, give me that gray color, create a new layer, shift F5, enter. So shift F5 is fill and or, or you can use the paint bucket tool and just fill it with that color. And while I still have this selected, I'll change the color to black. I'll go to edit stroke. So while the selection is still going on, edit stroke outside and I will guess how many pixels the line thickness is here. Um, let's say 10, uh, 10 pixels, hit OK. It wasn't 10, it's less. Edit, stroke, 8 pixels. Okay. Control D. Yeah, it looks kind of fixed, I think. Looks okay. So th th that part is done. Actually, I want to do uh, one more thing here. So I will come back here, site. So I'll select the, the hatch of the site. Uh, and actually holding, uh, select the marquee tool and holding down the shift key, I will mark my building so that it's, uh, everything is inside of the site is selected. Uh, then create a new layer again. Um, edit, stroke. And now let's see. So if that is with eight, maybe I can just get away with, with four pixels. Control D to deselect. And here I will just um, Control U. No, uh, that's not Control U. Control Shift U. No. Okay, fine. Edit or image adjustments. Um, why can't I change the U saturation? Hello? Oh, that's because we're in grayscale mode. So I'll go to edit uh, or rather image mode uh, bitmap, flatten layers. Uh, oh crap, then it flattens the layers, huh? Sorry, I'm thinking, just a second. Okay, let's do it this way then. Cancel, delete that. Uh, delete the outline and flat, uh, if it flattens all of these layers, that's fine. So image mode bitmap flatten layers, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's good. <laughs> all right, okay, so we're not doing that, I guess. Alt Control Z. I'll show you why this happened in just a second. Let me just bring this back. Yeah, that's fine. And file, save as, uh, find where it was saved. Jesus, that, that, was, uh, that was funky. Um, PDF, overwrite my site with the PDF. Okay. 
high quality print, sure, safe PDF, yes. So the reason why this happens, uh, where, where you see gray 8-bit uh, color range for, for this particular PDF, is because when we import, so for instance, section AA, right? When I import section AA here, it asks me what kind of color mode do I want? And I forgot to change this to RGB color. So RGB color is important. Bit depth, 8 bits is fine. Um, hit OK, and then it's going to import properly. Uh, so, so that you can work with color, not just with grayscale versions. Uh, Shift F5, Control Y, or Control I. Um, here, I don't really need to change many things. Uh, the only thing that I want to change is, um, let me just grab a ruler and place it here. So Control R, oh, come on, Control R to create these rulers and then you just drag a guideline from them with the mouse. Uh, let me create um, two more there and perhaps there and what I'm thinking is maybe I will create one more layer and just have a yeah sure black color gradient from black to nothing so the preset is uh, foreground to transparent um, and let me just create a box within these guidelines, something like this. Or maybe we can make it even heavier. Oh, that's fine. Like that, and just drag it down so that we have this kind of a gradient going on. Um, well, that's a little bit too intense. It's a little bit less, like that, Control D. So we have a smooth gradient going on. Uh, now I can, holding down the control key, I, I can select these uh, guidelines and bring them back to, to where they were. And now just by changing the opacity, I can control the intensity of this gradient. So I want to bring it back to something like this, maybe, maybe even less, just to give it a little bit more of a footing. Other than that, we could mess around with, with the colors here, but I don't really want to. Yeah, so let me just call it a day with this one. Control S, uh, JPEG, <laughs> JPEG, not JPEG, P uh, PDF. I'm so used to using this for JPEGs. Save, uh, OK. Um, yeah, don't preserve. Could not save because the file already is in use. So my guess is, yep, it's in use by Adobe. So let me close that, by Acrobat, I mean, and do the same thing again, Control S, ah, PDF, uh, select it, save, yes, okay, save, yes, sure. So it saves. Um, let's see, where's my Revit? Oh, sure, um, so let's save section BB. Yeah, it keeps asking me <laughs> for what to save. Um, let me, while, while it's doing that, let me prepare two more, uh, two more PDFs, so to say. Um, this one is going to be called uh, Final, why is this in white? No, in black, uh, with less. So that's final rev uh, rhino rhino uh, structure view capture to file. So this is something that we haven't done. Um, in these tutorials, but what you need to do, this is going to be a page. So file. Uh, I'll I'll just save it as a as a PDF. Um, ADA 20 missing one, save, okay, uh, no, save, 
so that's and also another one is um, second plan. There we go. File, save as PDF AD twenty missing two. I'm just doing this because I'm waiting for this to um, for for Revit to export everything. So while I wait, I'll just uh, prep for the last stage of me showing you how the final uh, PDF is going to look like and just creating. Yes, yeah, see that as well, uh, and just creating files for wherever. Um, I, I I didn't do do some part. So that is section BB. Okay. I still hate that staircase so much. And look at it closer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so bad. Okay. So at least it's uh, close all tabs. At least it's now done. Oh, isometric view, yeah. Uh, save that as well. And I will show you two ways of how to combine all of the PDFs into one. Uh, so one way is just going to the uh, the course website and choosing <sighs> where is it? Using Windows, no, Rhino, combine PDFs online. So using this tool right here to combine PDFs. So it just asks you to upload the files and you just kind of find where you have your files. And I believe mine are going to be, so Rhino, Rhino PDF, I have that one. So I'll just upload that one first and then upload a few more. These. Open. So now it's uploading the, the, the file and also exporting the last one. So I'm waiting for, for, for the last one to go through. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, man. Just do it already. Uh, we won't need Photoshop anymore. I just showed you, you know, the, the, the basics of how to get, get it into Photoshop, how to mess around with it and how to export it uh, as a PDF from Photoshop. So you, you should be able to kind of do whatever you want with it in Photoshop while in Photoshop. Please, <laughs> please just, just, ex just export. I would be such a bad radio host just trying to kind of talk um, about nothing for a while to fill in the gaps in between the really nice songs, which in this turn is information. Um, in this case is information. Come on. So bad. Mm. And I don't want to pause the video as well because uh, pause the recording as well because it takes a while for the computer to um, send it from temporary memory into in, in, into storage. Uh, at least in my case. So we just need to wait. Or did it crash actually? Maybe it crashed. I don't even know. Let's skip over this. Uh, I don't want to wait for, for, for this uh, export. Maybe it will finish up later. Um, so let me hide this instead. So we do have all of these imported except the final one. And here I have... Uh, why can't I? So here uh, I have the possibility to change up the, the sequence of these files. So this comes in first, uh, the Rhino tests, then uh, we will have the, the big boy, the, the, the big 
view capture to file of the final chosen structure. Then we have the site view, uh, site plan. Um, actually, we can have two sections here. That's fine. Um, then we will, after the two sections, we will move into the to the plan. There we go. Axo is done. So let me just upload the Axo as well. Uh, hello, Axo. Where are you? Isometric view. Yeah. Um, so we we have plan. A plan. Uh, one plan is missing, and we have our axonometric axon view. I think that is it. We click combine. And then it's just going to send us over the combined PDF. Easy. We open that up and we see Rhino. Final Rhino structure view captured to file. Site plan. Section AA. Section BB. Ground floor plan. Second plan. Uh, whichever floor you want, by the way isometric view and that is it that that is going to be your project um i i did it poorly uh and as you can probably see you know that even me doing it poorly kind of resulted in pretty long tutorials maybe that's because i, I blab too much but that's that's what you're going to um what you're going to have in the in the end only at higher quality hopefully um one more thing, how to do it is if I were to just take the finished one and place it into no, no, that's not doesn't go to exports. Rather, it goes to the Revit PDF exports. So I have these all of these uh, files here, PDFs in one folder. Uh, if I want to combine them, and I have Adobe Acrobat, uh, the light is there. We go. If I, uh, if I want to combine them and I have Adobe Acrobat uh, Pro version, I can right click, uh, select all of them, right click and choose combine files in Acrobat. And then it's going to ask me, uh, yo, what's, what's the sequence? You know, what's, what's the sequencing? And I do the same thing, right? I first find, you know, the, the, there's Rhino PDF and then we have uh, the, the, the big version of, of, of these structures, of these tests. Uh, then we have the site plan, then we have, let's see the plan here and plan number two, section AA, section BB, and the sheet, right? And notice how, uh, actually, let's click combine. It's going to do its magic. And notice how um, there's, there's a difference between how section AA looks and loads and how section BB loads. So section AA just loads poc, just immediately. Well, section BB, well, now it's loaded, but it loaded in, in parts. This is because section BB is still in vector mode, while section AA is rasterized. And the line thicknesses of section AA are not reactive anymore to how much you are zoomed out. So let's zoom out by uh, 25%. So it's small, right? And the line thicknesses scale together with how much we zoom out. That's because this went through PD, uh, through Adobe Photoshop, while this one keeps the line thicknesses, right? So the more you zoom out, the shittier, uh, well, the, 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 the worse the preview gets. Um, so this is why I love uh, running my drawings through Photoshop and rasterizing them before the final print. Uh, or the final delivery, just to make sure that if the client zoom out from my drawing, the lines will become thinner the more he or she zooms out. Uh, this is, of course, a vector <clears throat> version of the drawings has its benefits, for sure. Uh, but just for presentation purposes, uh, it's better to rasterize them. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and then you have your, your binder, your file, save as, uh, wherever, choose a different folder, uh, desktop, actually you give it a proper name. Kirdekis uh, Gediminus A20. Let's see, actually, is it last name or first name? How, how did I write it? 
Um, last name, first name, but the AD20 comes in first. So AD20, Keridakis, get the minus. Hit save. Drop it into the well, uh, drop it into the temp unprotected folder. Either you or your friend um, drops it in, and that's it. That's that's the end of the of the road, <laughs> so to say. <laughs> right? So, I hope you've learned something new. Hope uh, you'll be using the knowledge gained in your um, future projects. Sorry for me blabbing a little bit about uh, uh, di different different parts of, of, of throughout these tutorials. Blabbing a bit uh, is just I'm not used to Revit that much, and sometimes I find um, certain aspects of it frustrating, but other aspects of it are super good and super useful. Um, right? Yeah, get to work finish up your 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 projects bye